it is Melena Ray Johnson. That's me. And I am here with Write Your First Book with Melena, talking about write what you know and then keep writing. So I was having a think earlier this morning and then I had another little typey type when I went into another Facebook group and it was talk the the post in the Facebook group was talking about rules of writing that you may have heard and things that work and things that don't. And one of the one of the rules of writing that comes up often, including in one of my favorite episodes of one of my favorite podcasts, currently don't know if you're watching in the future. I'm saying this as of October 10th, 2017. Uh, one of my favorite podcasts is We Hate Movies, and one of my favorite episodes of their podcast is Free Enterprise. Now, who knows what could happen in the future with these people? I don't know, but right now. Pretty cool, you should listen to the podcast. If I have to go back and scrub this later and say, amendment, uh, such and such did this, and I'll do that. But for now, it's a good podcast, I like it, they've grown a lot, uh, and uh, Free Enterprise is still a, an episode that holds up, and one of the things that they talk about is <laughs> write what you know, because the people, Free Enterprise is a movie loosely based on Star Trek, starring Eric McCormack of Will and & Grace, and William Shatner of Star Trek. and the people who made the movie, uh, they wrote, the, the writers of the movie used the actual names of themselves as the characters of the movie. And I thought I was bad enough making, making my first book, which is called Steve the Penguin, based on me. <laughs> with the, the main characters based on me. The rest of the characters are fictional. And none of the stuff in the book actually happened. And I thought it was bad enough basing the entire character on me and my, my predilections and my, my upbringing. I didn't name the character after me because that would be so silly. But, yeah, these people named the, – they made a movie using their names in their own story. Okay, so anyway, so right what you know is the point of the th what uh, the, they were talking about in the episode. Okay, so – I guess it's the same as Tony Danza using his name in every uh, show that he has ever been on. Just keeps it easy. And and Joey Lawrence does the same thing. I don't know who else does that. Anyway, the, the point is, write what you know. Yeah, write what you know. Writing what you know is often a tip you used uh, to encourage writers to start writing from the base of what they know. Some people take this really far and um, use it as an excuse uh, to only write people and places and things that they know about. So a lot of a lot of the lack of diversity and inclusion in media uh, is ex is excused by saying that the writers we hired, which all happen to be white men are only writing what they know, and they only know other white men, so therefore, they're writing what they know. No one then makes the question, poses the question, why did you only hire white men as writers for your shows? Why don't you hire someone else who is not a white man? Because there are tons of those people just submitting to <laughs> thousands of people submitting to like less than 100 spots in these diversity initiatives, but we can't find anybody. You couldn't find any. Okay, so we're getting off on a tangent, but the point is that writing what you know can also be used for good. It can be used not to just exclude people because they don't happen to be white men writing about other white men doing white men things. There are ways that you, as a non-white man person, can also use your experience because there are lots of people like you. There are lots of people who are like you in ways that you don't know um, because sometimes you don't know what's inside of you until it comes out. Now, I will give you a for instance of writing what you know in a way that uh, was uh, surprising to me until I started thinking about it more deeply uh, this morning. So, as you all may know, I'm currently working on my fourth book, Love It a Luau. And I have my notebook that I show. Now we got Love It a Luau. It is the story of a refugee suffering from PTSD who is scared to fall in love with a single dad. And the main character's name is Casey. She is a 34-year-old woman. She happens to be Chicana, and she is from Southern California, and she has multiple degrees. Now, like me, I, li I live in Southern California. I uh, went 
I went to Loyola Marymount and then USC, very Southern California schools. And uh, I'm not 34, I'm 35 right now. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I do have multiple degrees. Like Casey, I have a bachelor's degree and then I also have my MBA, which is what Casey has. Uh, what else? Casey is also, uh, see, well, see, the, the <laughs> funny thing about Casey in this book is that she's going through a period of change. So I, so I, I have been developing the character of Casey since I was in middle school. So for me, it's like, oh yeah, Casey, blah, blah, blah. But she's going through this period of change right now. So it's a little different. So the thing about Casey is that before the book, right before the book, she was a really vibrant and like, loud, not loud person, but she said a lot of things that people were like surprised that she would say out loud. And, uh, and, and she, uh, she loves, she loves pop culture in a way that's different from me, but the amount of pop culture she likes is similar. The stuff she likes is different. So she's very, she's very much aware of who she is and what she wants, but she isn't as analytical about it. So she has, so she still reads stuff like Vogue and Cosmo and L and Vogue is the Anna Wintour one. Yes. Uh, and I, probably Entertainment Weekly if it crossed her path, and what what other kind of problematic stuff. Like, she wouldn't read Bust. Uh, she wouldn't read Ms. Magazine. She, she'd be like, oh, that's cool. Who's on the cover? Uh, she, she's, she's not as, like, she's not as, she, she thinks being woke is cool, but in her story, it's 2014, so she hasn't really got into it. Um, but one of the things that she's experiencing in the book, which causes a lot of turmoil in the book, is that she's in this new island, this new society. And I grew up on an island, St. Thomas. So I, so a lot of the aspects of St. Thomas, including the size of the population, is the same as the island she's on, Hale Kapua. Even though Hale Kapua is in the Pacific Ocean, St. Thomas is in the Caribbean Sea, which is part of the Atlantic Ocean. So there's a lot of similarities so that, so that I am writing what I know. I know about an island society and how everyone knows everyone. And uh, you, can be, you can feel kind of cut off from um, American society and somewhat, but still really heavily influenced by it. There, was a, there are those aspects. And one of the things that she realizes is that something happens in the book uh, that, that is a growing realization that it's something that she thought she escaped by being part of this homestead network of uh, sustainable communities throughout the world. And the thing that she thought that she had escaped actually comes up again in a way that she hadn't expected. And she has to figure out how to deal with it. She's dealing with, she's dealing with issues of privilege in a, com a more complicated way than uh, she had thought about before. And one of those, oh, there's a lot of ways that this related to me and I hadn't realized it until I started thinking more deeply about this particular chapter. Uh, that is really relevant. I initially thought, oh yeah, Casey's going through this. Casey's doing this. Casey's doing this. Casey is experiencing this issue. That doesn't really have anything to do with me, right? And then I realized, oh, the issues that I'm dealing with in my relationships are very similar to what Casey is dealing with, even though they're completely different situations. Yes, they are completely different situations. So a specific example that I just thought of was when I, in business school, went on a trip to uh, Argentina. It was our consulting trip. And uh, I learned about the instability in the uh, Argentine financial system uh, that you can read more about on Wikipedia, Wikipedia and Google it, that you can do that. Uh, but essentially Argentina has had instability in finances for decades. And I figured that since, Ar <laughs> I mean, I don't know if everyone in the United States knows about Argentina, but Argentina is a very European influenced um, country. Uh, for various reasons. And there are a lot of white people in Argentina, like a lot of white people in Argentina. So I figured based on what I had been observing through privilege and um, 
colonization and genocide and the the destruction of the North North America and South America that if there are white people that run a country then obviously everything's fine because they have white privilege and I found out that that was not true uh, that 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 is an aspect of, of what had happened but but there's still a huge problem there's still huge problems in Argentina and they don't necessarily have to do with the people being white, um, whereas there are other there are other issues um, that plague all of South America, and it wasn't necessarily just based on skin color. So that was something I re had realized. I had to go there to actually figure that part out. Um, that that it's a deeper complexity than just skin color equals this. So I want you all to write about what you know and keep writing. And as you keep writing, you're gonna figure out stuff about yourself, you're gonna figure out stuff about your characters, and you're gonna see the ways that your life and your perspective have influenced the characters in ways that you don't even know until you write the whole thing out. So I'd love to hear about the realizations that you all are having as you are writing, and please leave me comments, please email me at write your first book with Milena at gmail.com and continue watching the videos. So thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.